Good afternoon. Welcome to another edition of Born in Grace. Uh, I'm your host, Chico, and this is, <coughs> this is uh, not Nick Whitaker. Uh, we thank you for doing this program today. Uh, we want to uh, read a scripture. Uh, before we read the scripture, I'm going to pray. And um, Dominic's going to read Matthew, the fifth chapter of the Beatitudes. And then we're going to have the lesson. Heavenly Father, thank you for waking us up this morning. Lord, we thank you for protecting us, Lord. We ask that you bless this station also. Let no weapon form against it prosper, Lord. We ask that you bless all the hosts, management, uh, the staff, and also bless the audience that's watching this program tonight. Okay. Keep them safe, and we ask that you let them do the notification of this show. Bless your people everywhere, heal the sick in the hospital. Comfort the bereaved. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All righty. Uh, today, uh, uh, Dominic can read uh, some scriptures, and we'll open up the lesson to uh, a few of the things that could be happening around us, such as a few current events or past events. Not necessarily what you see on the news or uh, what you read, but something might happen to an individual that you know or might come in contact with. Um, go ahead, read the rest. Read the uh, scriptures up down there. Uh, add, leave it to it. Uh, God blesses those who are poor that realize their needs for Him, for the kingdom of heaven is theirs. God bless those who mourn, for they will be comforted. God bless those who are humble, for they will inherit the whole earth. Yes. God bless those who hunger and thirst for justice, for they will be satisfied. God bless those who are merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Let me stop you for a minute. Uh, what particular Bible would be reading this from? The New Living Translation. Okay. This is the New Living Translation, so when some of these words seem foreign, it's not the King James Version. Okay, go ahead. Continue. God bless those who are hearts are pure, for they will see God. God bless those who are work. God bless those who work for peace, for they will be called the children of God. God bless those who are persecuted for doing right, for the kingdom of heaven is theirs. God bless you when yeah, God bless you when people mock you and persecute you and lie about you and say all sorts of evil things against you because you are the followers. Is that the end of the scripture? Chapter, I mean, verse 11, yeah. Okay. So here are where the Beatitudes in the New Living Bible. And today, I know uh, many of you perhaps ask this question when uh, something happened to you, a family member, or whoever. We ask this question. God, why me? Uh, God, why me? So I'm going to give you a few examples and then uh, try to share the, a little light on it. Okay. I've been told that misery loves company. I was w wondering why so many people Suffer, God, why me? A plane goes down, and multitudes die in a crash. Why, God? Who was it for? Someone we know or a loved one do drugs and have an overdose. We ask it, God, why him? Could this have been prevented? Yes. Sometimes yes, sometimes no. We don't know. So it could be if we was there at the right time, if someone provided no car, no care, or if they got to the hospital in time. Or the 
probably could be maybe. But we don't know, so we just leave that alone. Every day we are bombarded with tragedy. Tragedy that we don't understand. And we ask the question, why me, God? Right. We, we ask that question, God, why me? Another example. A group of soldiers was in a tank. And the tank fell over a cliff. And the soldiers was trapped. They were trapped when they fell over the cliff. And they lost their lives. We ask, why God? Why God? Why did it happen? Why did it happen? That's the magical question. A camp master from a local Boy Scout troop went hiking. Before they can set their tents up, while they were in the woods, they were surrounded by bears. Before they could run, some of them were attacked and were eaten. Why not? They were eaten by bears, but a few of them got away. A family lost their, I'm sorry, a family lost their house and lost their lives in the fire. While they slept, how did this happen? Could they have been saved? Could they have been saved? Now, we know uh, that the fire department and some of the local authorities tells us we need to have a smoke detector in our house. We need to change batteries New Year's Day and daylight savings time or whatever. I have some type of uh, device. Or a plan of escape. A letter. Uh, what you call those things you sprayed on the fire? Um, fire extinguisher. A certain amount of fire extinguisher. Or something that, that, that can provide safety. But if you're sleeping and the house is consumed by smoke, if you don't get up in time, that smoke can overcome you and you fall and pass out. And you can't get out in time. But alarm sometimes, if you have batteries, it can awaken you. And you can let your loved ones know that we have to get out right away. So before this happens to a family member, Try to plan a, fa a plan of escape. If you sm smell smoke, don't always go by the source and see where it's coming from because this is real thick and dark. Please alert your loved ones and try to get out. Amen. Because all over the country, we hear about fires and how families are lost because they've been down and down. Or maybe someone's smoking in bed and falls asleep. Uh, a few travelers some time ago were in a village searching for gold. They got real hot. And one of the travelers went down to a pond 
to fill his can canteen with water. Only to be chewed up by a local, only to be chewed up by an alligator. Ah, wow. The other day, a doctor injected a patient with the wrong pain medi medication. The patient passed. Was this murder? Ah, wow. Every day we ask why to questions we don't understand. A person was on a luncheon one day. While he sat down, someone poisoned his drink. Why not? Why him? He later died. Some squirrels got in a chimney, came down to a bed, came down to a bedroom, and bit a baby. Why them, God? Why them, God? Why them, God? Why them? Several nuns were getting ready for a catechism when the roof fell on them. We ask, why them, God? Why? Why them? But these are questions we don't understand. And a lot of times we want to blame God we want to blame someone, and we wonder, we ponder, could this have been prevented? I ask you, could have, the roof might have been weak, it might have been in dire need of repair. Or the wood uh, in the house that might have been um, um, could have been um, eight, and some of it could have been raw either by tournaments, and it wasn't inspected. So all things happen. A bunch of children was going to school one day. Was going to school. On their way to school, a car jumped the curb and hit all of them. It hit the kids. And some of them were killed. Others were in an accident that might require surgery. We ask why. Why them, God? Why them? The car jumped the curve. We don't know if he had a medical problem or was he drunk or not. But anyway, children lost their lives going to school. My buddy was playing ball and had a heart attack. We asked, why him, God? Why him? He had a heart attack while he was playing ball. Now, I don't know if he had any other medical problems. It was too hot or what? Some years ago, um, I was delivering papers on Linwood, right off of my pit. It was a very prominent football player. 
I forget what school he went to, but his name was always in the paper. I believe he was getting a scholarship to go to one of the local universities. I'm not going to say the individual's name because I don't want to put the family in trauma or just remember that. But this individual was very healthy to my knowledge. And he was running on the field and had a black brain tumor. This is before uh, they started pushing the law for people to wear helmets while they play sports. But this individual was in the prime of his life, a young teenager, and he died. I, for one, was shocked along with the people in the neighborhood. But we begin to ask, why God? Why? Why God? We don't know the answer to a lot of the questions we put forth. But in the sweet by and by, it will be answered. Like I told you about my buddy having a heart attack. And we asked, why? Why him? The other day, the black club had a swimming party. Hundreds was in the pool. But only three people drowned. Why them, God? Why them, God? Why them? Let me pose another question. Where was the right God? Now, some of you baby, not baby boomers, but some of you uh, that are in your uh, early 50s or middle 60s can remember back in the day, be you on the west side or the east side, we used to have a truck. TB2 had a swimmer there. And it would be lodged at, at the corner or in the middle of your block. And many people in the neighborhood and the surrounding areas would come and swim in that pool on a hot day. Now, we don't see the swimmer bill no more coming to our neighborhoods. So just because it don't come to our neighborhoods, some of us used to go to Kelsey Hayes or the local schools. When I worked at Parking and Recreations, a lot of people came down to Lipton Swimming Pool or some of the swimming pools in their neighborhood. Now, right now, in the days of COVID-19, a lot of swimming pools and gymnasiums are closed and recreation centers. Uh, so, some of you will go to the neighborhood uh, fire hydrant and turn the hydrant on so your kids can relax, cool up, and play. And I don't recommend this because a lot of you might do it illegally. And when it's chance for the fireman to use the hydrant when it becomes a fire in our area, the water is not dry, but it has to build up. And sometimes people suffer. And we ask, why? Why, God? So, back, back to the uh, program in here. Do not turn on the fire hydrant if you don't work for the uh, fire department. Because if it costs a few lives, it 
couple of friends went hunting for deer. While they were hunting for deer, hours later, some of them were shot. Why? Why, God? They were shot and killed. While in, school, while in school, a student got pushed down the stairs. Pushed down the stairs, only to be put in a coma. Why him, God? We have bullies in school. We have people doing things for right them. I don't know if this was a hate crime, but the person got pushed down the stairs. They fractured and broken a few bones. He was put in a coma. So let's cut out the crank. One day, one day, our dog was barking. We went out to inspect the noise, only to find a rattlesnake in the yard. I need to find a rattlesnake in the yard. But there was no harm done because nobody was bitten. A senior was on her way to pick up some food, but tripped and broke her leg. We asked her, why, hey, God, why, why? My wife's nephew, mother passed. He was only 11 years old. He was crushed and devastated. But we took him in only to love him more. Just why, God? Why? He didn't understand at a young age why his mother got sick and died. He was frantic and scared. But because there was nothing else left to do, she was taken off of life support. The doctors gave all hope up to the family. But today, this young man is doing much better, accepting that his mother had passed because she went to church and he knew that she could be, that she's in glory. But we still ask, why God? Why? Why God? A lot of prisoners got COVID-19 and died alone. There was no funeral because the family wasn't able to eulogize them the right way. We answered, why, God, this why. Before a neighborhood could start, before a neighbor could start a job, he was carjacked. He was project and hurt. He wasn't able to go to work. And we asked, why God? Why God? Why him? A well-known priest, the Lester Boys, People found out. They, they robbed him and beat him to death. Was this justice? When we asked, why God? Why? These are some of the examples in the naked city. We find we find millions more of these in our local paper. But a 
as we find these in our local paper, you can add more to these. Because every day there's something going on, and we look for someone to blame. But it isn't God's fault. Some of these are pure accidents. Some things happen. But my son is going to tell you uh, why some of these things happen due to no fault of our own. Uh, for some of you Bible scholars, uh, can you read Ephesians 6 and 12? Uh, for those who write in the audience, a lot of you know the answer. God is not the author of confusion. Yeah, it's a joke. Or pain. But we, we have the prince of the air that does these things. Would you read that one? Ephesians 6 12 says, For we are not fighting against Christ and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authority of the unseen or against mighty powers in the dark world and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. So we're supposed to sum it all up. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but principalities and spiritual wickedness in high places. And these are the enemies of this world. These are Satan's people or Satan's uh, agents. So when you, these things happen, do not blame God. You may ask why God, or you might not understand. But don't put this on God, because the Bible tells us in St. John 14, that Satan is the person of principalities, the rulers of high places, and he's the ruler of this world. So right now, we've been tuning into Growing in Grace. Take all your burdens to the Lord and leave it there, and he will work out every problem. So when, when you begin to ask, why God? Why God? Don't ask why, but ask him to help you through. Until next time, you've been tuned into Growing in Grace, and I'm your host, Chico Whitaker, along with my co-host, Dominic Whitaker. Until next time, Trust in the Lord, lead not on your understanding, and all thy ways acknowledge him, and he will direct thy paths. Thank you.